Hello. Today I wanted to talk about a film I saw in theaters this year, but kind of like the last installment, I thought, yeah, I'll just wait until uh, October. And that film is Scream 6. Um, I will uh, sort of give some spoilers because I wrote some stuff down here. Um, some initial thoughts originally, and then when looking back at them, I sort of made some changes here and there, but overall, I'm not going to overtly spoil it, because, I mean, you never know. There's people who haven't seen this film yet who want to, like, I don't know, might want to wait till it's Halloween time, so, yeah. Um... I will say, I do think this is a pretty decent film. It's, uh, I think it's better than the last one, though the last one I wasn't all that fond of. Um, um, I don't think it's better than any of the four Wes Craven made, though uh, I think those are pretty much the very top. Um, and apparently they want to do a seventh film I, I don't know whether or not you know what that will uh that would look like um, um i will say the characters from the fifth film that survived in or in this film you know those the newer characters they they actually feel like very good, actually well-rounded characters, and they're actually pretty good. Last time, I wasn't too fond of them because they kind of were just kind of like, meh. Um, the characters I, you know, at least for me, that I really liked, were the ones who uh, were in the first four, so the main trio. But, uh... Yeah, th uh, this one, you know, yeah, the, uh, yeah, this one is uh, quite interesting. Um, the very beginning, a woman gets killed. Turns out it's a student in a college, and then uh, he goes home, and he's looking for, like, his roommate. Not able to find him, and then gets a phone call, and then, you know, the ghost face voice is talking to him and you know they're like playing hot and cold finds his a uh, uh, roommate uh, uh, killed and like decapitated and then the killer comes and kills that guy and then uh, that's how the film begins and uh, it's very interesting um, you know uh, it was interesting to find out who was doing all the killings, and, um, spoiler, it is a relation to the fifth film with one of the killers, so there is something to that, but, uh, you know, I don't know how, how much I want to develop, divulge even, even further, but, uh, you know, it's it's very interesting just how they did it. In a way, it sort of mirrors Scream 2 and how, you know, Mrs. Loomis is trying to get revenge for, uh, uh, on Sydney for killing her son, Billy, where in this film, it's family, basically, spoilers, I guess, of, you know, family members avenging the, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> Jack. Uh, is his name correct? Oh, yeah, I just had it. Oh. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of Jack Quaid. Never mind. Uh, 
Richie. Um, yeah, uh, the family of Richie is uh, basically uh, 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 avenging his death, like how uh, Mrs. Loomis um, avenging Billy's death, though. Yeah. Uh, the family members, you know, they all have basically last names that are kind of different, so there's nothing really uh, on the nose right away. You know, there's nothing so uh, obvious, like, oh, well, they're related to whoever. Um, I know in, in, in Scream 5, I forgot to acknowledge um, how the guy at the... In the who gets killed by getting his stabbed in the throat or in the neck, whatever. Uh, that's Stu Mocker's uh, nephew who was in, you know, happens Matthew Lillard in uh, Scream 1. I knew that, but I didn't think it was important. But, you know, family and stuff, I thought, eh, might as well throw that out there. But, uh, yeah, um... So there's that, there's that aspect, which is sort of like a parallel to uh, the second installment in the franchise, sort of like how Scream 5 was like a, supposed to be like a parallel reboot of the original, which we already had that with the fourth film, but you know, the fifth one, doesn't, one wasn't as uh, well executed, in my opinion, so... Anyway, you know, um, Nev Campbell didn't return, which we all know, so, so which is unfortunate, but I kind of, I, I, I understand why, you know, in the fifth film, she wasn't really utilized much, and she kind of like, kind of like, you know, if, if I'm not going to be really used much, why bother continuing to play this part? And I don't blame her, you know, I mean... Yeah, why why would you want to keep playing a part where you're this is now the fifth installment and you're just here and there. You're not really uh important in the grand scheme of everything, you know. You're you're important in the sense like this is your you know uh you know, your your character is a bit of a survivor since the first film. And there you go. This then you're just sort of supposed to be a catalyst for helping wrap the film up, and that's I get it. I then Sidney Prescott's a great character. You know, Dewey Riley is a great character, but well, in the fifth film, we know what they decided to do with uh, his character, which uh, there are people who think that was a good decision, and then there are those such as myself that think that was a bad decision. Particularly, at least in the way that it was executed, like the, you know, his fate is just gotta kill off a character like that. You might as well do it in such a way where he actually seems more heroic. Like since we all go back to Stu's house, like at the end of the first film, I bet he dies there. You know, if anything, it would be sort of like a, a closing that circle. He was supposed to die in the original film. And now he dies here in this film. Maybe in the same spot. Like, he gets stabbed and everything and ambushed and, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, one character we get to see back, <clears throat> aside from the, <clears throat> excuse me, the four characters who survived in the fifth film, as well as Courtney Cox as uh, Gail Weathers. Um, we get to see Hayden P uh, Pinateri, I believe that, that is how you're supposed to pronounce her name, but I am also known for, uh, mispronouncing names, even sometimes names I actually know, and in the moment I just say the wrong thing, so, there you go, but, uh, she was Kirby in the Scream 4. And she is now an FBI agent, and it was really cool to see her back. Um, Wes Craven, you know, 
when she got stabbed, he always intended, like, you know, when you kind of linger on her and she's kind of moving, that's to tell you, like, well, she's not dead. But then she wasn't in the fifth film, so. Um, I guess it's like, you know, she could be dead still. Or she actually could be dead. Or she could be alive. We don't know. And, uh, you know, uh, They have this thing, like the four main characters have like this thing where they call them. So it's like the core four, which is kind of dumb, but you know, there's a lot of stupider things said and done in horror films uh, these days. Uh, you know, there's like there are just way dumber things. So I'm not going to be all that upset about it. Um, so yeah, I don't really hate this film it's just i think for some moments were fairly predictable which i think that can happen with a film series like this um certain characters you meet who are new you kind of like all right this character's gonna die or this character could live or this character is the killer or could be a killer and with scream there's multiple killers so you know usually um so you can kind of try and pick and choose who is likely to, to be the killer. And, well, watching the film, it was, uh, for the first time in the theater, it was actually not, you know, it was, especially for one, one was quite obvious. So I'll just say that, like, somebody gets killed. But the way that it happens, it's just kind of like, hmm. It just seems a little suspicious or odd. Um, there's also masks that are old that uh, killers wear from the previous films. Like they take the, uh, they they are able to have access apparently to uh, evidence, which could also be a clue as to who one killer is. Um, basically um so yeah uh some of them are very old and it's like you know this character is my favorite and there's and there's like this big uh place at the end where you see all these uh, uh like the various clothing and various uh weapons specifically used or certain things used at various uh, in the various films that people wore when they were killed or um like the, the tv that killed the stew in scream one uh that's there and there's it's just a very interesting kind of like thing it's like this auditorium theater like an old like a banded theater basically and it's very interesting how this shrine exists um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is not a bad film, really. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It could be because the last film, I had a lot of mixed feelings about it, so that could be partially why I'm not as harsh on this film as I I may have been, perhaps, if the last film... Even though I wouldn't be all that harsh with this one, because it isn't all that bad, but it isn't all that great either. You know, it's just fine. Where the fifth one was very mixed. Uh, uh, so, yeah... And one thing I have to say, which I've written here, is that I do wish that uh, what Kevin Williamson planned for Scream 5 and 6 was actually kind of actually done. You know, he's still around here, and he's like, as a producer, I am pretty sure. Yep, executive producer. I know, oh, and 
Cordy Cox was an executive producer also. I think I knew that, but yeah. But, uh, with, uh, with Kevin Williamson still being involved in the franchise, um, I, I think his idea of the fifth film was actually interesting where Jill was actually still alive because originally she was just shot in the chest, which, you know, could still be livable or the, rather than just being shot point blank in the head. Um, I mean, you could still be livable, but have a lot of adjustment to do to be able to be fully functioning again. But, you know, she was shot in the chest originally or, um, or in the original cut, though here, um, and his idea was like she would still be alive and she would, and apparently and Sydney would have amnesia. So with the whole being shot in the chest thing, I think that was sort of like a last momentary thing and then Posey decided to get shot in the head. But uh yeah, originally um she essentially gets away with uh uh, the killings she did, and now uh, Sydney has amnesia. Jill and her friends are in college, and are being stalked by a killer who knows what she did. Uh, you know how she actually was like the mastermind behind the killings, in, like two thousand eleven or two thousand ten. And so, uh, that, uh, idea went out the window and they decided to just kill her off. But, yeah. It was definitely nice to see, uh, character of Kirby. Um, yeah, this is a pretty fine film overall. Uh, yeah. Tara Carpenter, Sam Carpenter. They're fine. Um, uh, especially in this film, they're better than they were, like, in the uh, previous film. Because, again, like, those characters who survived, they're, uh, they got better... Uh, character development in the sense like that they feel like very well-rounded characters this time around, which is I, I like, and how having to deal with the aftermath and how Sam is trying to be a very protective sister to Tara, but, you know, yeah, Tara wants to do her own thing and have fun and everything, but and also seeing Skeet Ulrich as Billy Loomis again as visions and stuff. That's it's kind of odd. Like, is she ever going to be a killer or what? And this whole thing, like, oh, it's like a germ. It's a disease. You know, uh, your real father was a killer, so you're going to be one too. Which it's kind of weird or odd, but so far no payoff for that. So I don't know. They apparently want to do a seventh film, so. Maybe by that time, there will be uh, some sort of payoff. And apparently, they want Nev Campbell to return. And um, and hopefully, uh, if they do that, we'll uh, get to see some actual um, uh, uh, some more stuff with Nev Campbell. I think uh, you know, she's just great in that part, but, you know, she's a great actress outside of the Scream films, you know, but, you know, obviously Scream is what she is known for. Um, and like Janet Lee, she's not a fan of horror films, and yet is best known for horror films, so there is that. Um, and also, one other thing, uh, Kevin Williamson apparently said that the sixth film would have dealt more with uh, Dewey and Gail's relationship more. Like, 
Um, I don't know if they would have been in the fifth film. Uh, they could have been. Um, you know, if word about murders going around, around while they were all in college, he might have uh, also deduced what had happened and raced there and telling the police and other people involved and, and everything. It just, uh, I don't know. It would have been interesting to see what Kevin Williamson's version of Scream 5 and 6 would have been like. Of course, uh, Wes Craven likely would have been the person to direct the films, though, of course, uh, his passing in 2015 no doubt put a wrench in the development of these last two installments. Um, um, it's unfortunate he is gone. I mean, I mean, all of us will be gone one day, but, you know, when you have talent like he did, you know, you're just like, it's just unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really thought this film was fine. It was not a bad film at all. Was not great, was not better, or not necessarily even on par to some extent of the Wes Craven screen films. But it, I think it was... Uh... Excuse me. Uh, it was a pretty good film overall. It's also late, so apologies. Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I did not hate this film. Yeah. And I don't really even hate Scream 5, but it's just like, you know, you have four films helmed by a one director for the most part written by one the same dude with the exception of the third film but you know the, sort of a timing and everything and how his original script uh, wasn't going to work because of various circumstances but that were going on but I have already talked about all those films so you can find all of those movies if you or my discussions of those movies if you like. Or you don't have to. Whatever. It's, you can do whatever you want. And I've rambled on long enough. So uh, apologies for all that. But uh, yeah. Anyway. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you're all having a great weekend. Hope your week's been great. And I hope uh, your next week will also be great. Or at the very least good. See you all next time.